Thank, thank you very much, and I appreciate people coming late today. Um, as you know, the Secretary of State, John Kerry, left this morning, and I did tell him I was coming to a great university today, and I'm very honored to be here. And I'm going to hopefully have a uh, chance to address a lot of your questions. And actually, since the Secretary of State came today, I think we can focus a little bit more on the politics, but I will definitely address entrepreneurship in my remarks. But I just look forward today to the opportunity to spend maybe 15 minutes um, doing two things, talking about why the UAE is important, why it is great that the American University of Sharjah is here in the UAE, why it's so important, and why this education is important for you all in terms of the opportunities that the United Arab Emirates and this global crossroads, as I call it, will be important to you. And then I'll talk about U.S. foreign policy on why the UAE is important in U.S. foreign policy, as the Secretary of State was just here for the second time in four months. And then what I hope to do is have lots of great questions from you in the audience. And I will ask you questions if you don't ask me questions, so please think of some good questions. Um, as long as you promise to, this is an off the record, in other words, it won't say, I won't be quoted directly as the ambassador said this, the ambassador said that. I will give you candid answers to tough questions. And as the Chancellor explained, I've served all over the Middle East, so I'm happy to try and tackle questions on U.S. Um, foreign policy in different countries. But first of all, let me talk about the United Arab Emirates and why this global crossroads is important, why it's great you're here in Sharjah taking advantage of this um, American-style education, and why I'm pleased to be here today. Uh, first of all, the United Arab Emirates is, is a cr crossroads not just for the Arab world, but for a region that I like to say stretches from Moscow to Cape Town and Morocco to Malaysia. This is an area that includes the Indian subcontinent, includes all of the six or eight fastest growing economies in the world in sub-Saharan Africa, includes um, Central Asia, includes um, parts of Southeast Asia, the huge populations in Indonesia and Malaysia. This country is becoming a center. It's becoming a place where people are coming on their way to other places, on their way here to do business, and on their way here to meet people. And it's not just business, it's tourism, it's um, the potential of culture, it's a potential of um, um, bringing together people across a, that wide area. And I think that's important because there aren't many cities like Dubai and Abu Dhabi in this area. Certainly, the Middle East is going through enormous um, um, tumult. Um, it's very difficult to find positive examples of change, positive examples of stability, positive examples of development now. And Dubai and Abu Dhabi offer cities that are connected with this huge area by two airlines, Emirates and Etihad. You can now get on a jetliner here and fly anywhere in the world nonstop. And Emirates and Etihad are doing that every day and are increasingly becoming the airlines of choice to get around this large area. Inside Africa, to get from one country to another, those eight countries that are becoming the fastest growing in the world, you can fly Emirates from one place to the other. You can fly Emirates to Dubai, do business. Um, you can fly Etihad um, to many, many destinations. This country is developing as an infrastructure, uh, with its infrastructure, is developing as a crossroads for a large area. And that's where we're focused on entrepreneurship. We're focused on entrepreneurship because this offers the front office for a large, large region. The United Arab Emirates becomes a front office that offers enormous opportunity for those African businessmen to meet Indian businessmen, to meet Southeast Asian business people, to meet all types of people coming from around the world to try and make um, this region the success that it can be. So entrepreneurship and business are something, are things that the United States is very focused on. The last time I was here, I spoke to business students. Um, uh, when we talk about the U.S. Um, style of doing business, we talk about building relationships, we talk about um, uh, tr technology transfer, we talk about partnership, 
We talk about a corruption-free, um, fair, and, um, and um, open way of doing business. And the United States is proud to support entrepreneurship because of the experience that we've had in the United States. So 85% of our economy is based on small and medium-sized enterprises, SMEs. Um, you hear about the big guys. But what we're increasingly seeing is the small companies coming to this global crossroads. And that's the opportunity for entrepreneurs here to link up with entrepreneurs in the United States. Um, I go to all the trade shows and to encourage American participation. We just had Arab Health in Dubai, which had over 300 US companies in the healthcare field. Um, we have Gulf Food, the big food show, coming up next week or the week after, I can't remember when, where we have another 300 companies coming. And many of them are small. Many of them are mom and pop entrepreneurial shops or young people who are coming for the first time. I was at a new trade show two weeks ago in Abu Dhabi called the Global Forum for Innovation in Agriculture. And there were a couple U, uh, MIT grads who had started their greenhouse technology company six months ago as a startup. And here they were in Abu Dhabi as their first venture as a, business, uh, as a business, which was extremely impressive. And they had a great show, met lots of people, met lo made lots of contacts. As I said, this is a place where entrepreneurship is going to, I believe, lead the way for positive models to the future. And that's where your participation in AUS is, I think, a stepping stone to that. Um, there's a book that's out by Chris Schroeder, who has participated in our entrepreneurship programs called Startup Rising, which is about how this Middle East, without any support, it sees entrepreneurship, sees startups in places like Egypt, Lebanon, Jordan, here, where there hasn't been much government support, where there is, in some of those other countries, chaos and um, the picture is not so bright. We see this region, 330 people in the Arab world, and then how many billion in that region that I talked from Morocco to Malaysia, from South Africa to um, Russia. When you look at that region, the potential for entrepreneurship to begin to meet the consumer demand, to begin to meet the needs of those people for everything that we can perhaps offer. And that's where I always like to say that the US's best exports are higher education, medicine, technology, and our way of doing business. And I can come back to those in the question and answers, but those are the exports that people don't argue about. When we talk about exporting some of our political views, when we talk about some of our other views that we have, our strongly held views, um, we often run into trouble. But when we talk about higher education, as represented here in AUS, when we talk about medicine, as I was, and I just toured with part of Secretary Kerry's delegation, the new Cleveland Clinic Abu Dhabi, which is the first truly an, um, American run, American staffed hospital to be set up outside the United States. Um, when you look at Amer American healthcare and the way we provide um, patient care, and then when you look at our technology transfer and you look at the joint ventures that are being done here at this global crossroad, you see the enormous potential for the future, which I hope all of you will play a role in, in supporting a future based on those positive values. So global crossroads, a country where because of the leadership, because of the infrastructure, partly because of the location, although the location can be a good thing and a bad thing, the location is great in terms of geography, being able to get anywhere in the world. It's not so great in terms of some of the unrest and instability in the region. But this is a country that is a global crossroads that has enormous potential. And the second part of my comments are why it's important to the United States. And when you look at the Middle East, um, when you look at, and I've served off and on in this region for 28 years, when you look at our, what used to be our two pillars, Egypt and Saudi Arabia, you can certainly see that the so-called Arab Spring has brought great changes to our relations with the Middle East. And the United Arab Emirates becomes a partner that is different than e Egypt and Saudi Arabia, has different approaches to things, has, different, uh, has a different diplomacy, but which, which is very engaged in the region. 
Um, just last week, um, uh, um, His Highness Sheikh Mohammed bin Rashid hosted the Dubai government conference, the second Dubai gov government conference. When you look at this um, country's ability to perhaps, and it's with, with some care that I think we talk about this, but perhaps to offer a model to the rest of the region, it becomes extremely positive for the United States to coordinate with this country. We work with this country in, from Afghanistan to Morocco. Um, we work with this country in Somalia. We, work with this, we have worked with the country when the former Yugoslavia broke up in terms of peacekeeping. Um, we coordinate on humanitarian and assistance programs. We're looking to see how we can work with the United Arab Emirates for a better region and a better um, broader area. Um, some of the technology, technological um, discoveries and products that are being developed here are being deployed immediately to Africa. Africa, Sub-Saharan Africa is, as I said, where there's enormous promise. Um, we've been working with YASAT on bringing um, IT and um, mobile computing to, uh, through satellite service to Sub-Saharan Africa. And there's enormous successes there, and it's just one of the areas that we coordinate very closely. Um, the United States is looking for partners in the region who are going to work on moderate um, and um, successful models that we can support in terms of inclusion of women, in terms of the importance of education, in terms of fair treatment across societies, and in terms of a lot of the values that I see reflected in what AUS is doing here in Sharjah, and which is, makes this such an important partner for us in this region. I mentioned American University of Cairo and American University of Beirut uh, to the chancellor because they used to be the pillars in this region for American education, going all the way back to when they started um, early in the 20th century. Now, through um, situations that are beyond their control, the countries that they are in are going through enormous change. Um, I think American University of Sharjah has an enormous role to play in this region, and an enormous, and you as the students and faculty and staff have are in a central place to provide positive examples of what can happen in the Middle East rather than the negative examples that unfortunately the US media in particular, but the global media in general focus upon. So entrepreneurship, um, as we look at how we're going to develop a Middle East and a broader region that has inclusion of people, entrepreneurship is one of the areas where um, women participate through business programs where young people, old people, where those people with a small amount of capital, a couple of restaurants, a dry cleaner, can develop their businesses with some support, we hope, from the governments in a positive way to permit um, that SME economy to grow. And certainly in the United Arab Emirates, they're trying to figure out how to make this work in a positive way so that SMEs can take over. There's been lots of initiatives um, named. We had President Obama's Entrepreneurship Summit here two years ago, or a year and a half ago, on which, in which is focusing on how we can promote entrepreneurship. And there's something called an entrepreneurship ecosystem, ecosystem where you have the laws, the legal framework. One of the things that we're pressing for in the United Arab Emirates is a bankruptcy law because um, in order to fail four times, in order to be successful, as many US businesses do, you have to have bankruptcy protection so that you can not um, fail one time and then not try again. Um, in order to um, support small businesses, we have the Small Business Administration in the United States. We have state and federal programs to support um, entrepreneurs. Uh, we have the um, uh, uh, support for women and minority-owned businesses to give those businesses a better chance to um, compete. And we have um, small-scale company uh, support programs that are important to deal with the fact that there's so many big companies in the, in the marketplace. All of this is an entrepreneurship model that we think we can bring to um, the Middle East and to the broader region. And I think that our partnership with the UAE, and I can talk about the politics. I'm sure people will want to ask me questions about the politics. And since I just spent a lot of time with Secretary Kerry yesterday and this morning, I'd be happy to address those questions. But I think one of the things that we need to focus on is the positive example of entrepreneurship, the positive example of higher education, and how we link those 
two issues to providing a bit better future for the region.